Hello everyone, welcome back. So, let's do a dodge roll because our character is not the most graceful to control in combat. She kind of slow and in order to get around really you got to put your sword away, run up to somebody, pull it back out. It's a hassle. Let's let's change that. So, what you will need is, if you go to Mixamo, select the Akai character, or whatever character you're using. I gotta reload this, because she's frozen. Type in Roll, and get this Sprinting Forward Roll. The reason I'm using this one is because it's the only one that has an in-place animation, and that's what we need. We need that, that in-place version. So once you've got that, come back into your project. Let's go into... I'm going to go ahead and open up the player blueprint while I'm here. Let's go into the characters, player, animations, and then we will import that sprinting. Bind it to our player character's skeleton. Import it like that. Watch the fancy sideways barber pull. And once it's done, let's go find it. So right here. All right. So once you find it, you're gonna right-click it, and this time we're gonna do it a little bit differently. So instead, instead of setting up a new state for it, we're just gonna create an anim montage. Montages are really awesome. I wish we'd have been using them from the start. I'm gonna call this Dodge Roll. You can do underscore MT for montage if you want, but montages are great. I wish we'd been using them from the start. They're really, uh, they, they fix a lot of the hitching issues that we were having, but we will be covering that in the future, in the next, in the farming series. I'm going to start that one tonight, but I wanted to continue this one along as well. So the way we can use animation montages is we need to adjust our animation blueprint just a little bit. So I'm gonna back this up. If you open up your animation blueprint and it's not in this graph, like if you got this one, then just click anim graph like that. So we are going to disconnect that with an alt left click, drag it away, and then we want to save new save cached pose. What this does is this takes the state that you're in and then says, hey, hang on to this information for me. I'm gonna use it in a minute, basically. So I'm going to call this current pose. You can call it whatever you like. Doesn't matter. And then down below here we are going to... I hope that's not too loud. Hang on one second. I forgot to turn off the AC before I started recording. Um... So we will get current pose. We're going to use the cache pose, current pose. We're going to copy that and paste it down here. And then we are going to blend between these because off this bottom one, we are going to call a default slot. So montages play in slots. Not like a casino addict, but they, uh, they require a slot to be fired from basically. And by default, characters have a default slot so it works out so from this top one we will call layered blend per bone and we will hook this to the blend pose and then from our layered blend pose let's go and set up a layer to blend and I am going to be using if you click this button you can see your character skeleton in case you need a refresher but I am going to be using the hips because I've heard they don't lie so we will compile that real quick and then we'll recompile after because I realized I forgot to hook that back up so use current pose just go straight into the base pose and the one with the default slot goes into your blend after you're saving the current pose up here and with that done let's go into our player blueprint find some empty space and I'm going to set this up. You can either set a, a, go to project settings and set up an input. I'm just going to use left 
Where's the C? There it is. Left control for no. And on pressed, we want to check something. So I'm going to grab out my character's mesh from the components tab. And I want to get the anim instance. This checks to see what kind of animations are playing. Or what animation data. Or let's see. Returns the animation instance that is driving the class if available. This is typically an instance of the class set as anim blueprint generated class. Basically it says are you playing your animation blueprint? Are you playing a montage? Etc. From my understanding. I might be wrong on that. But basically you need to get the anim instance so you can see if if no is any montage playing so we'll add a branch right here hook this boolean up as the check and if not like they're not currently doing a dodge roll then we want to play montage and it's this one with the gray you want to make sure it's this one that has all these all these outputs on it so in skeletal mesh component we want it to play on our character so we'll hook that right there the montage to play will be dodge roll ignore those this is where I was messing around with some other stuff so once we are rolling we want to set a new boolean not new var we want it to be rolling we will set that to true right here and because I want us to be able to use this if we have a weapon equipped or if we're uh, well for right now we'll just do this so um, now how do how we can set it up to where our character actually is forced to move when they're rolling because right now they'll just play that animation in place we will set max walk speed because we don't want them to be stuck rolling at the speed that they're walking at because it's too slow so I'm going to promote this to a variable called roll speed no that's I forgot to delete these this is from when I was prototyping it out a little bit ago so now I will just rename that roll speed speed oh I don't have to hook it up it's already hooked up alright and I'm gonna default that to 650 I think was what I used the last time I think that's what it said right before I recompiled so roll speed 650 then we want to set orient rotation to movement because if we are using a weapon currently then we want them to stop facing in the direction so they can roll away from the danger and if we're not using a weapon this won't have any impact on us at all then we will set use controller desired rotation we'll leave that one false I do need to move this. We'll need to move this one this way a little bit because from the character movement we also want to set their max acceleration. Because the way we have our acceleration set up right now it won't... Well here, oh, I can't show you. It's not a set up on the tick yet. But it basically she won't roll full speed yet. She'll kind of have a build up to it and it just looks awkward. So this one I'm just going to use a magic number. Let's just do, I think our acceleration is 768. So I'm just going to do 768 times 2. We'll just double it. So you can either promote this to a very... Let's do good practices now. I'm going to do good practices. We'll just call this roll acceleration. We'll do it right. So I'll move that back. Gonna add that here. All right. 
Let's see. Yep. All right, and then we want to add a notify in here because if it goes on to the completed, it kind of looks weird if it goes all the way to the end. But we can click this browse button, go to our dodge roll notification, and then right about here is when I'm going to say it needs to blend out. So on my frame, that's at 31. And right here on the notifies tab on this one, I'm going to right click add notify. It's not going to be a new notify like this. It's going to be this montage notify. Now this is how you use notifies inside of montage. These are for like the animations. These are for the montages. So I'm going to just add that. And if you add a notify and you need it to be named, you can click the little pink tag right here and then it's got notify name, notify color, all that, all that good stuff. But it's, since it's the only notify that we have in this one, we don't actually have to name it. So on notify begin, we want to set rolling back to false because we're going to use this on a tick. Uh, I tried using it up on a custom function with a timer and it just didn't really work that well. For this, because you want consistent acceleration applied or consistent speed movement applied, you want it on a tick. I don't like using tick unless I absolutely have to, but for this one it's one of those things. So now what we want to do is basically copy all of these. We don't need the blue, but I'm just going to copy and paste them down here. Hook that right here. Go through, hook all the blue back up just like that. Gonna disconnect this one right here on that one. Grab all of these and move them this way because right here we want to do a, a branch check. Oh. Oh, no, no, no. No, yeah. Alright, so we want to set orient rotation movement false, use controller desired rotation true, but we want to only do this on a branch, because we only want it to do this if they have a weapon equipped. If they don't, then they need to just stay just like this. So if they have a weapon equipped, we'll do this. Now for the walk speed, for the max acceleration, we'll set it to 768 and then promote that to a variable called normal excel and then for the max walk speed we want to do a select float so if they have a sword drawn out we don't want to use the weapon equipped because the bow counts as a weapon but the bow also has a higher movement speed than the sword so we want to see if they have a sword drawn and if they do, you can go up and look at your speed variables, but I've got mine, it was set to 225 and 450. 450 was my base movement and 225 was my armed movement. I didn't promote those to a variable because that's bad practice, bad. All right, and so with all of this done, let's set up our tick so event tick we can set it right underneath it I'll add a branch and we want to see are they rolling in my 5.0 and if they are then we want to add movement input and in the world direction we want to get the actor forward vector So now let's take a look out here. And there she's rolling. Huzzah. Adventure awaits. Huzzah. And now if we equip a weapon. Oh, there's a little bit of a hiccup if you're facing forward and then try to dodge in the back. So let's play our blueprint. Let's move this rolling. Let's set this at the very end. Oh, right. Weapon. St 
still kind of a hitch. So let's just add a short delay. So I'm just going to delay until next tick and we'll see if that's good enough. No, doesn't seem to be. So get rid of that one. And I'm just going to say point 0.1. Give everything time to adjust a little bit. That's pretty good. Ah, because the animation. The attack stopped. So that's working. Let's check. Our bow. Yeah, you can roll everywhere around. And now when you're rolling like this, you can kind of speed up a little bit. Kind of like Zelda back in the day. <laughs> I was rolling all over Hyrule, man. But yeah, that's some rolling for you. Now you can go... Oh, one more thing you can do about the dodge roll is over here in this blend option, there is a blend time for in, and so it'll probably look like this when you're first looking at it. But if you click these little arrows, you get a little bit more blend options. So this is the time it blends into and out of the animation. So blend in 0.35, blend out 3.5. And then kind of smoothens that transition up a little bit. You can play around with values and find the ones you like. But it kind of smoothens it up a little bit. Makes it look nice. Buttery smooth. Now you can go further along with this and make sure. Uh, add some branches to the beginning of your roll function to check. Are you attacking? You might not want to be able to dodge roll at that point or are you falling things like that but this is the general this is the meat of how to get the rolling going so that's it for this one hope you enjoyed it and i will see y'all soon bye bye